lots of waves. Um, thank you for packing in here this morning. I promise I will try to make it fun. I've already been asked what this will look like in terms of uh, is this going to help me as a user or a developer, different things like that. I hope to ride the line between the two a little bit. Um, this comes from the angle of as someone who can code, here's a good way to make the dashboard a little easier. Uh, if you are a user using the dashboard, you might learn some things about what you shouldn't touch uh, in this <laughs> meeting, which will be really good. I will save your life, I promise. Um, so hopefully we can kind of come at it from both angles. I'm happy to answer questions afterwards uh, and help out as much as I can. If you want to yell at me, that's where you can do that. I will now respond while I'm talking. If you want to visit this URL, what this will take you to is something on GitHub. Now this is for nerds, okay? But it will take you directly to a plugin that you can drop into a site that utilizes all the code examples that we talk about today so that if you want to try something out or see what it actually looks like when you're putting it into practice on a site, you can already go ahead and edit those code examples instead of having to write them from scratch. It also gives you a good idea of, you know, if you have a test site, install it, you know, delete, add some lines and things if you're tinkering in the code, and it'll help you kind of understand what's happening and what's changing when you apply some of these things. So, especially for developers, uh, myself included, although I've gotten far more enlightened on this of late. Um, it can get a little interesting when you start talking about why is the admin area hard or complicated or scary at all. It seems really simple to me. When I compare it to other CMSs, it seems a lot easier. Uh, I'm not scared of it because I know what I'm doing uh, and all this kind of stuff. And that, that is neat. Uh, and this might be what you look like when you're doing the admin. Uh, and you are super good at it, and you are dancing around probably without pants as well. Um, especially if you work from home, I've learned about this. But this is what happens when other people try to do this dance. <laughs> and they really, really imagine that they look more like this guy. But they look more like these people. Right? And it's hard for us to remember, isn't that great? You just sit there and watch it all day. Boom. <laughs> so I learned a lot about this, and you can see kind of the framework of this from something I'm working on uh, with a business partner of mine called Evermore. Um, I'm not pitching you on that today. Most of you, honestly, are not the target customers for that. But the concept here is that um, we host and curate WordPress for people. Okay, so we take away a lot of the risk that's involved for people who want to use something like WordPress and would benefit from it, good morning, um, and would benefit from it but honestly don't want to mess with the details or as soon as they start touching something, everything falls apart, right? Um, people become very self-aware when they're trying to run a business and they realize the next time they touch something, everything will die. Um, and so this is a really good example for them. Uh, and a lot of what we're using today is what we use in production. Um, basically, if you sign up and are a customer and you hit the WordPress dashboard, you see the default experience. We don't change a lot of that stuff because we want you to be able to know WordPress, whether you're a customer or not. Um, but we take away a lot of the scary things that we'll talk about today. So here's a basic look on the dashboard. Uh, when you have a fresh WordPress installation. Uh, and let me maybe break this down for you, whether you're new or old, kind of look at it with fresh eyes and pretend that you are a person who has never really seen or experienced this before. So this is the way I would talk to people now. That's pretty much the only safe zone in the whole thing. Okay? That's the only thing where you cannot break the site by touching the wrong thing in a default installation. Okay? Everywhere else, Dragons, <laughs> complete dragons. And we don't think about updates having, uh, having scary elements and things like that in there, but you're basically, when you think about it, you're downloading and implementing code that you did not write or review onto your website and basically just hoping to God that it works correctly. And if someone missed a semicolon somehow, your whole site will be blank. Um, so it's scary. And we trust it a lot because we end up having good developers in the WordPress community, and so overall, it's low risk, um, but if you've ever talked to somebody who just updated and then OMG, my site is broken, they'll feel a little bit different. Oh, and then also there's this thing called screen options which hides all the stuff that you wanna see. Um, 
that's the most confusing thing to tell people because you're sitting on a call or you're talking to somebody and you're trying to tell them to put something into a box that's not there and then you have this aha moment where there's oh no there's this tab up there called screen options that lets you unhide the things that you need to see <laughs> it's there anyway so we're going to do two things to the admin area today and i'm going to walk through all of them and we're going to make it friendlier and safer for everybody whether you're a developer or not right it's really not a bad idea to have things a little more foolproof even if you do know how to fix something when it goes wrong so step one is to clean some of the crap out of wordpress <laughs> one thing i'm going to add a caveat to this okay but one thing there's this little tools area in there which was basically like a junk drawer for things that were sort of like stuck in wordpress that we kept around for a long time that nobody used um, there's something called press this in there until the upcoming version of WordPress Okay, so they have redone it for 4.2 which will come out sometime soon Prior to this that thing is just kind of really weird and fairly useless in my opinion And it's confusing to have things like that there point is though That's an entire page that we really don't need people clicking around and looking at and trying to figure out what's going on It just adds to the clutter um, and so you can actually go in and remove these pages with plugins. Everything that I'm showing here today, you can use a plugin, install it, or install in a must-use plugin, which I'll explain a little bit later. Um, but in any case, you can do this, activate it, and all of this stuff, like you can just hide things, you can take things away from the admin, you can simplify them, and you can do it the right way without getting hacky and anything else. Uh, and on top of it, if you want to go back to danger mode, you can just deactivate the plugin and everything goes back, okay? Two, so I'm a user who doesn't really know anything about caching, but my developer installed caching because that's how websites work. Um, and now I have this admin bar that's at the top when I'm viewing pages and posts and all this. Uh, and that caching plugin has stuck a bunch of random stuff in there that I honestly don't ever need to click on. Um, not only do I not really want to click on it because I don't need to read it, but like, there are things that you should just like not know in life if it's not important for you to know. And FAQs about a caching plugin is one of those. It will make you believe that you understand what's happening. It's a very dangerous thing to read. And so you can go in and actually remove a bunch of the things that's dropping down in those menus, hide those from people entirely, reduce confusion, because most of the time the purpose of that bar is really just to give people quick access to edit things and hop into places they want to go. Also, there's this, uh, there's this meta box on the dashboard that's like WordPress news. No one cares about what is happening in that news feed whatsoever. The people who already want to read WordPress news know exactly where to go to get it, and it's not the dashboard of their client's site. Okay? And, and if you don't really care to read it, why is it there? It sort of implies that it's important and there's stuff you should read when really it's just links to people arguing about onerous things about WordPress. So none of it is helpful. <laughs> so, so you can just remove these boxes entirely. And again, the, usually the way that people approach this is, uh, oh, I know how to use screen options even though people don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into somebody else's account, go into screen options, and start hiding all the stuff that I don't need to hide or they don't need to see. Right? So that's one way to do it. Um, here's another way that doesn't require you to risk security by passing passwords back and forth or hacking into somebody else's account and then relying on cookies and all this kind of stuff to make it happen. Just remove things that don't need to be there entirely, uh, and that's one of the things you can do. So step two is kind of understanding what you should actually be able to do. Um, so one example, and I wrote a plugin that does this. It's very simple, uh, but you can install it and do it this way. So there are some default roles in WordPress, uh, and basically it's like you can't do anything, you can't do anything, you can't do anything. You can do everything, all right? <laughs> Uh, and so that's the gap between editor and admin, um, and it's, it's sort of a weird spread of things to do, um, when a lot of times you want to give people the right to do things like move widgets around, <clears throat> but you don't maybe want to let them access PHP code directly, right? There's a nice gap in between there. Uh, and so what this allows you to do, or the plugin that I wrote, is it basically says, look, if you're an editor, We'll let you touch some of those other things that are in there that affect the appearance that will probably not break your site if we do all the things that are involved here. Um, but you can actually get to that appearance menu with themes and widgets and plugins or, uh, yeah, not plugins, but the other ones I said. 
uh, and you can use all that kind of stuff. So, um, but that's an easy way that you can kind of add capabilities to roles without, okay, raise your hand if you've ever tried to build custom roles in WordPress before. Okay, raise your hand if you thought that that was super fun. <laughs> Two people, all right, no, that's okay. It's just that those people are less than the people who did it uh, and think it was not fun. That's because it's really confusing and hard to keep up with uh, and you end up trying to basically do this most of the time. Uh, just like, okay, I want to take somebody who can write and I want to give them a few more things that they can do. Um, once you get more advanced, sure, uh, advanced roles and capabilities are helpful and important, but a lot of the times we're just trying to add small tweaks to roles. So that's a good way to do it. And again, that changes the admin for people. It lets people go where they want to go, use the customizer and different things. Three, um, one thing you can do, and now we're going a little bit more into, especially if you want to make the admin area and the WordPress experience better for people that you built the site for, or maybe you do maintenance. Um, maybe you're helping them with things from time to time and basically their job is just to write content, make changes, uh, different things that normal kind of users would want to do. Um, so one thing we can do, and there are a couple of these here, is when you start adding themes and plugins for other people, uh, because of the way that our community works and GPL works and all of this, um, people want to add these little boxes that say, um, thanks for installing my theme, could you give me money or visit my website or do all this other stuff that we actually don't want anybody doing because it's very confusing. If you buy a theme for a customer, right, and you roll that into their cost, and then they see a link that says, oh, are you having trouble? Why don't you click here and give someone else that you don't know money to answer your questions that you should be asking somebody else. And it gets like a mess in a hurry. Um, and so there are a couple of ways to deal with these. Uh, and one of them is I saw recently in the actual customizer, somebody had stuck an entire section in there that's like, give me money. No. Um, so we can remove that there. We can also remove those nasty admin notices. If you've ever installed the right combination of themes and plugins, you'll see 97 admin notices about your license or about an API key or about an update or about allowing tracking or all these. Or you may see 90 updates and then also these cool little tool tips all at the same time. Um, and you just basically want to log out and go home because there's so many of them. Um, one thing that we do want to do, if you are updating things for other people and you're taking care of that, like if you're using a moat thing like Jetpack Manage or WP Manage uh, or Manage WP, different things like that, if you are updating it for other people, just remove the whole thing that tells them that something needs to be updated. They don't need to know. It introduces unnecessary concern to their day. They can't do anything about it anyway. Because most of the time, this little nag is sitting up there and it asks them to click something and then when they click it, it says you can't do that. That's just annoying, don't do that. So you can actually hop in, and sometimes this takes a little bit of code perusal, um, but you can hop into plugins and themes and you can go find where they're adding little admin notices and just say, take those away entirely. So step four, this is where it gets really fun, especially where people uh, are pretty surprised that with a minimal amount of code, you can really change a lot of the complicated parts of WordPress for people. Um, so one thing is if we install this plugin uh, as a must use plugin, so let me explain that for 30 seconds. Um, some of you will still have questions afterwards because it's kind of confusing. So uh, you can, when you install a normal plugin, it goes into a plugins directory, right? So there's this magical directory called mu-plugins. If you put a plugin in there, it automatically activates itself, okay? Automatically runs before the other plugins. It's basically a way to say, this must happen on this website. It's irrefutable. You can't deactivate it. Uh, things go in here, right? So when you're customizing things and you're actually coding it well, that's a very good place to put stuff like this. You don't want people looking around trying to deactivate the thing and then as soon as they deactivate it, all of the stuff comes back. Um, so anyway, when you do that, you can actually turn off the ability to see what must use plugins are in place because WordPress will show it. Because that's just another thing that's confusing. If you're trying to make the admin less confusing, there's no reason to show the thing that you're using to make it less confusing. So you can turn that whole section off with this. Now this is where it gets even more fun. So for instance, with Evermore, when you look at the list of plugins, which I hope that whole kind of plugin interface gets better soon in general, but 
uh, you know, with a with a default thing, you get you get the name of the plugin, you get the description, and then you get like version number, author links, you get a link to a random website, you have all these kind of additional links that people can shove in there. Again, another opportunity for pay me money, even though you don't know who, who I am, all this kind of stuff. Uh, and so we can do a couple of things. One of these is let's take that whole row that sits below the plugin description that says it's this version, it's by this author, go to the author URL, and we're just gonna hide that entirely. Because for people who are using WordPress, they don't really need to know about that. Um, unless they are people who tinker, want to know more about plugins, but for the most part, again, that's not the majority of WordPress users, okay? They, especially if you are actually helping them install plugins, keep them up to date, all they need to know is do I need this on or off? And so this helps hide a lot of those details and makes things a little bit easier to parse on that screen totally. As well, as I mentioned, they can, plugin authors can shove these links down there by deactivate and settings. So there are several, um, like this one, WordPress SEO. So it'll link you to FAQ, it'll link you to premium options, it'll link you to all these other things. So uh, with Evermore, we already pay for that for people, and then it's already presented there, so they don't need to upgrade. They don't need to ask anybody else questions because we're the support people. And so we can just hide those things entirely. And so what this function is doing is saying, look, pretty much just like take out anything except for the deactivate link. Just leave that stuff there, right? Because that's what we want people to be able to do. Um, and so at this point, you've really taken that whole big table of plugins and you've made it a lot less daunting to look at because now people can just see what's the name of the plugin, what is it supposed to do, is it on or off, okay? And you can leave links to settings and things like that if you want people to be able to touch that. Now here's even more fun. So if you have some things installed for a customer especially, um, or you know, this, this is also applicable even if you're not a developer doing it for other people, but you're just like the WordPress person at work and everyone else is not and doesn't need to touch things, this could also be helpful, okay? So let's say you have, like in this case, we have like a security plugin, caching <coughs> plugin, maybe a CDN plugin, so different things that people just should not touch. There should be no reason to change it once things are set up, once things are good. You can just hide these entirely from the plugin area, okay? So that people can never accidentally stumble across it and say, yeah, I don't think I need that anymore, and then kill your server, right? Because that's happened. Um, so what we're actually doing here is we're saying, okay, uh, here's a list of plugin titles. You know, if those plugin titles are there, hide them. Unless, because you're the nerd, right? So now you can hide or add a little git parameter here. It says C plugins equals the show. And go ahead and show me all the plugins that I'm hiding from other people. That way, because you're the nerd, you can go in and, sh and activate or deactivate and different things like that as you want to. Um, and so again, this is all about curating WordPress for the right people, but making sure you leave room for yourself if you need to do things. This is one of the only examples where it would probably be easier for you to just be able to see it or not see it. Uh, in almost all the other cases, you still don't need the stuff that we're hiding. You still don't need the WordPress news dashboard widget. You still don't need a lot of other things like that. Um, further, so we've already hidden things from the menu bar that are mm -hmm. unnecessary. We've hidden plugin links that are unnecessary. And we've taken a lot of things off the dashboard and, and places such as that. So now let's say, okay, let's just remove pages entirely that people don't need to be able to touch, okay? So here's the cool thing, again, because you're the nerd. So you can still visit options pages, for instance, for a caching plugin, you can still visit it just by knowing the URL that you're supposed to go to. What this does is it says, just hide it from being able to discover it in the menu and click from there. Okay, so certainly you could go in here and at this point you could say if you have user roles or something, you could specify your role in this function and whatever, you can mess with it as you want. Uh, but for the most part, to me, the easiest thing to do is just say, I, I know eventually what the URLs are to get to different plugins. All I have to do is kind of plug it on the end of the domain. I go straight there. And so this allows people to not have to uh, have the unfortunate discovery of things that they shouldn't touch and then start touching. That's what people do, by the way. Um, sometimes they get bored or excited, um, and it's sort of the, the other side of the coin when we really empower people with WordPress and they get really pumped and they start dealing with really complicated things and they're like, I'll click around and see what happens, and then everything breaks because that's what happens when you get into complicated things. 
Um, and so by doing this, we can remove a lot of the risk that's involved in those sorts of things at all. So this is really just plugging into that function that I showed initially that hides the tools page. You're just removing other pages. Uh, and you can look up in the codex how to, how to apply this to your particular example. Um, but it's a really helpful thing to do. So let me soapbox this for just a minute. This is what happens when you use the built-in WordPress editor. <laughs> okay, so there's this thing under appearance and editor where you just have this magical text box where you can um, mess with PHP code, right? I told you. Um, so with PHP, here's an example, right? So you accidentally uh, forgot a semicolon. Um, your whole website looks like this now. <laughs> Not only that, because you did it in the editor that's in WordPress, and that's how you were editing the file, the, your admin area looks like this too. So you can't even get back to the place that you were to make the change that you know that you needed to make because you know that you were using the wrong thing to edit the code to begin with. Right? So now you need to make sure you have FTP or magical access to get into this thing, go in there, find the file, and honestly what you're doing at that point is doing what you should have been doing to start with, uh, and it's just really embarrassing. So what this thing is, uh, is this is a constant that you can set in your configuration file, or as you'll see in that plugin example that I gave you, um, you can also set it in a plugin, you just have to do something particular to check for it. At any rate, by doing this, you just say, okay, we're just gonna turn that off. We're not gonna let people get to that. That is a very good idea for everybody. I personally wish that WordPress would ship this way. I really don't understand why we give people access to this kind of thing, but aside from that, if you are in control of any website at all, just do this, okay? Just do this. That is the wrong way to edit code. It is very scary, um, and all of us have accidentally caused this. Oh, well, wait, that's gonna play again? Let's just, I don't know. I really like watching this. But that is what it feels like. You're adding stuff and you're like, nah, I'm gonna be fine. Everything is cool. Let's see how much I, eh. right? But anyway, everyone has done it and had their website end up like this. And most of the time, because you were trying to do something quickly in the admin area, it's why you were using that text box to begin with. And now like you've spilled coffee all over yourself and you really have to use the restroom, but like now you have to fix it and you don't know who to get to and someone else changed the password now and oh my God, how do I get in touch with them? They're on vacation. <laughs> and you're running around and you're freaking out because your client's website looks like that and you don't know how to tell them that you did it the wrong way and it's your fault. So anyway. It's never my fault. <laughs> that's, that's true, yeah. It's their semicolon, really. Um, yeah. Uh, additionally, one other thing we can do, so this really goes further into the, your kind of curating WordPress and dealing with the maintenance for other people. If you are updating plugins for other people, okay, um, and you're actually staying on it and you're doing it well, just turn off the ability for them to do it entirely, okay? Because what happens is when there are those updates, there's that little refresh button at the top and a number. And it looks really important because it normally is. But if it's your job, take that off somebody else's plate. Make them less worried because WordPress is, not only right now is it encouraging you to update, right, visually, you're in the UI, it's telling you things need to be updated. But as we continue to go into WordPress 4.2, it's having a little shakedown about it right now, but they're making updates a lot easier for plugins if people shouldn't be doing that on their own because you need to test the plugin first or any number of reasons, you should just turn that off entirely. Don't, basically, the whole purpose of a lot of this stuff is to keep things that shouldn't be clicked from being clicked. And so just remove them entirely. Don't just have to train people on touch this but don't touch this. It introduces a level of fear and complexity into using WordPress that is unnecessary uh, it makes them really not enjoy being in the back end of that site because they're pretty sure they remember what you told them not to touch, but I'm not real sure, and now I'm not real positive if I can, in fact, add this content. Okay, this is way too much. Why don't I just get you to do it for me? And that's the way that a lot of things end up, uh, and it might be cool for you to make $25 an hour adding their content, but it's not really empowering other people to pick up on WordPress. It's making them afraid. Uh, and it's not helping them to learn and be able to utilize the tool that they have. 
And so that's basically the big point that we are trying to make with all of this, is we want to empower people to love WordPress the way that we love WordPress as users is by not being afraid of it. Okay, and just because WordPress is significantly better, I think, in the admin area than most other CMSs, doesn't excuse it from being complicated uh, and being really scary and having a lot of extra additional options that people can click on and break a lot of things on their site. Um, and so I would really encourage you, especially if you are either managing your own website and there are other people involved, or you're managing clients' websites, or you're doing something on a you know on a platform level like we're doing with Evermore, I would really encourage you to take some of these examples, look for places where you can remove uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt from the admin area for people, um, remove the risk that's involved in clicking and discovering, uh, and just basically remove the fear. Because the cool thing is, and this is why I keep bringing it back a little bit to what we've done with Evermore, what we can do is when we turn sites over to people this way, we can say, do whatever you want click anything. For the first time in your life, you can click anything in a website back end and not break it, no matter what. And if you do break it, that's something we messed up. We can fix that for you. Um, and so like, that's a really freeing thing to be able to tell people, because a lot of us, if we manage websites for people, kind of live in the fear that they're going to touch the wrong thing. Uh, or that we're going to have to explain, I know that it told you to update to that plugin thing, but like that was a major update. And there was this conflict with this other plugin that we had and now it broke and you just sound like a nerd no one cares what you're saying like they're just like fix it for me why are you talking <laughs> you know and it's just the truth like most people just want to get on with their lives and use WordPress to do it um, and so we need to focus on empowering people to use it that way so I've left some time for questions because I know this is very open-ended so what can I answer for people yes have you found uh Basically, you have the super admin on your website. There's things you need to do. Say you have people that are creating sites for you, but you don't want them to update plugins. But you need them to be able to activate things like that. Mm -hmm. Is there sort of that middle section between? <coughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Somebody else asked about multi-site. Um, multi-site is uh, like. It's full of dragons. The whole thing is dragons um, all the way through. Um, it's very scary. Um, for those of you who don't know, like multi-site is basically an option that you can enable in WordPress that lets you turn it into a network of sites. Basically, you can run the equivalent of WordPress.com on your own from your single installation. Um, yes, you can do most of this stuff with multi-site. It just takes a little bit more domain knowledge in looking for the proper kind of checks and functions and all that. This is not going to help as much stock that plugin that I gave, um, but you can pretty easily extend it outward uh, and give people more granular capabilities and things like that. Uh, but in general, uh, with multi-site, that that gap between user capabilities of you need to be able to do a few things, but not anything else, and then you need to be able to control everything. That gap is usually more acceptable in multi-site, um, and so not a cut and dry answer as much there. Um, but for the most part, like I would still say most people need very little access to a lot of the things that can just break stuff. Does that help? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose the, the update plugins, is, as a super local lease you want that quick ability. But then out in the wild, you don't want it there. I know that, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yes, ma'am? Will the, um, you know, like a couple weeks ago, Yoast had the hack that then WordPress pushed out the automatic update to. If you disable the updates, will that also stop when WordPress pushes updates to your site automatically? That's a super interesting question. Um, <laughs> no. Um, it's more complicated to turn off what they did that day. Um, so <coughs> to explain to everybody, so. Um, a very popular WordPress plugin got pushed out. There was a big security vulnerability in it. Because of the amount of people using this WordPress plugin, WordPress as a core team proactively like force pushed an update to most everybody's site, really without your permission, um, as a way to keep a large scale hack from happening. Um, 
so there is a different setting, basically, that you have to turn on uh, that's, it was poorly documented. Basically, there was some community disagreement about whether that was the right thing, because in one place, WordPress said we're going to be able to do that, and then in other places, WordPress said we would never do that. They fixed that now to say we will sometimes do that, <laughs> <laughs> which was really interesting. Um, but yeah, I can help you with details a little bit more later um, if you're interested. But that's sort of a separate setting to turn off. What we're turning off here is just the kind of like the ability to like modify files within the admin area, and just making it easier on users. Yes. You the first system, the client, where you're just kind of doing the initial setup of WordPress, so they're going to be in charge of this, and you're not going to be doing the, the, the maintaining the site. Yeah. If they are going to be maintaining it, I would I disable the editor, and I'll leave most everything else in place. I do my best to train them. Um, pretty much everybody who I've been able to take care of it themselves, I log in pretty regularly to make sure they actually did, because they didn't most of the time. Uh, but yeah, at that point, it's just a little bit more, uh, OK, you have tools. Be very careful with them. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK. Yes? Do you recommend in general with, with uh, clients when, when <coughs> you're responsible for updating core and all that kind of stuff, making them editor or admin? Because I've seen that, that kind of go different way, different ways. Yeah, the, to me, the line between editor and admin has a lot to do with what plugins you have installed how they're utilizing capabilities, right? And then sort of a trade-off between, do I want to kind of code in the ability to access things directly without giving them admin access, or do I want to give them admin access and try to just restrict things that they shouldn't touch? Um, there have been situations where um, people have admin access, but I basically say, unless it's me, hide everything. Okay, so that way, like if I log in myself, which you can do this with these, these types of functions. If you're really interested in tweaking with the types of things that we've shown today, like there are all kinds of variable capabilities that you can do with them. Um, and one of them is saying like, if, if it's me, if I'm logged in, like check for my user ID. If, if it's not me, hide all the rest of this stuff. Um, so there's some granularity you can add. Does that help? Yeah. Cool. Yes, sir. Philosophical question. What is I kind of came at WordPress backwards. I was a software developer who discovered it. I was actually looking for a. I was actually looking for a, uh, a decent PHP framework, mm -hmm. and fell in love with WordPress as what it is. Mm -hmm. um, once you get in the admin, <clears throat> you've got a cross between an app and a publishing platform. Mm -hmm. And so depending on what plugins you've got and depending on, on what your, your user scenario is, so I, I just want to express some appreciation. Some of the things that I'm, I, I came at, part of the reason I had so much fun with, <clears throat> with roles and capabilities is because it's a heck, lot, heck of a lot easier than I did with anything else back when I was running it right. the other direction. Mm -hmm. So uh, like WordPress would let you have something between an admin and an editor mm -hmm. without a whole lot of problems. So mm -hmm. my question is, do you have a, a methodology, best practice, set of suggestions <coughs> for defining, are, are, you, are you dealing with a publishing platform or are you dealing with an app? Interesting. Um, usually I can separate the types of people who are using it in those two different ways. Okay. So there are a lot of people who are just using it for publishing. And then there are people who need to be able to tweak settings in a plugin, make changes to a slider, different things like that. Yeah. I guess I'm talking about like from a from a business use standpoint, like they've got their they've got their sales report on there, and so so they go in the back end and, and update their business information with mm -hmm. the plugin, as opposed to you know so so, so suddenly um, I'm making up a scenario, their their profit statements are now available. In the admin area to their stockholders. I mean, because it's it's business information, but it's also it's published to a smaller group of people. That, so is it an app or is it a website? Interesting. Um, yeah, I just come at it from the perspective of I'm only going to give you access to things that I know you need access to. Okay. Which, um, which is an app, which is a, an enterprise app attitude. 
Yeah, and there are a lot of people, I, like I've set up larger sites uh, and there have been different people who need to be able to update only certain things. So that is all they see in the dashboard. Here's your custom post type and your things that you can edit. Everything else is gone. So that, that's a perspective I take. John O'Bain is laughing because I, I did that with their website uh, and I think it worked pretty well actually. It keeps people out of places that they shouldn't be. <coughs> Yes. Um, as a plugin developer, you talked about having too many admin notices. Mm -hmm. Is there a good way to say, hey, allow opt-in tracking, add our updater for a premium plugin? How do you get all that information to the user without drowning them in admin notices? Because if you have too many, then they just stop creating them. Mm -hmm. um, so step one for me especially, is solving most of those problems without ever having to ask them to begin with. So um, almost everything that is, do you want to be tracked? Do you want to enable this or that? It's just a setting in the database. So there's a series, th there's like a big SQL query that I run on a lot of what websites that we start up that just says, okay, go ahead and store database rows where it said, yep, you can track. Yep, here's some default settings um, and different things like that so that they never have to answer those to begin with. Um, most of the nags I'm trying to hide are the ones that come up because there's, oh my God, an update uh, and people need to do it, but you can't. Like, those are the ones that I want to get rid of and the rest of them I want to just kind of decide. I find that most people have no idea what allow tracking means, so they'll just click whatever coffee made them click that day um, and not think about it. Um, whereas it's anonymous and it's helpful, so let's go ahead and turn it on and it'll be fine. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's a, that, like, that whole database thing, that's a little nerdier, but that's a really good approach we found of if there's a ton of default settings in place, find the way it's stored in the database and then just like roll that into an installation immediately. Yeah. So I've had a couple cases where I've gone and hidden like menu items and stuff, and uh, the user will try and find it, like no matter what. Uh, and they'll like <laughs> Google it and they're like, my plugins are missing, what do I do? And mm -hmm. then they'll actually go in and manually type in plugins.php just to get to it. Sweet. So is there any, <laughs> <laughs> is there any way that you know that there's a way that we can prevent those users who are slightly savvy enough to find that information? <laughs> I, I think I would tip my hat to people who figure that out and get there. Um, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, if you really want to, though, I like. If I want to never ever allow access, even if they even if they find it, like you can just go in and just. If it's this page in the admin and you're not this user, I, you know. Okay, that, wait, that came out weird. Wait. <laughs> die is a function. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, wow. Uh, nerd coffee hat. Um, die is just a function that says just turn the screen blank and stop doing things, basically. Okay, I apologize. Um, that, wow, that would be harsh. Um, yeah, if you're not me, then settle down might be a better function. Um, but yeah, that's the way I would go about it if I had to really block it. Yes, Joe. Uh, there are a number of popular plugins being support that are directed at um, theming and controlling things in the admin. Mm -hmm. And I know that none of them probably off the granular code level stuff you're talking about here. But in your experience, are there any of those that you think do a pretty good job for somebody on the client side you want to offer them some capability to do some of the things you're talking about here? Yeah, so that's, that's also a good question. I'm going to answer it a little bit more broadly. Because I've, I've messed with those plugins in the past, there have been some. I have not found one that was good for more than a year. The problem that I found is I would install one, like there was one that helps you ha hide admin items. That was helpful. <coughs> and that was helpful until they stopped updating it. And then it broke. <clears throat> and then you couldn't get to the thing that let me get to all the other stuff I needed to get to. And so like the utilizing someone else's plugin, unless I've reviewed it and it looks a lot like this, is very scary to me to do most of this stuff. Um, I'd rather, in this case, if I feel comfortable, kind of roll my own and go with it that way. Um, but yeah, there are some, and I would say if you do find some that are helpful and you can use them, 
that's fine, but really check back on it, especially as WordPress does a couple of major updates. Make sure they're continuing to update their plugin um, because you don't want something breaking that gives you access to things that helps unbreak things, right? Yeah, cool. Okay, I thought there was one over here. Mickey. All right, so I like this idea, but scale seems like a challenge for us maybe where we have, I don't know, maybe 100 different sites we want to implement this on, but not just, not just me, but like three of us on the team that we need admin access. So would it be reasonable to take all that and put it in like a, make a new role called like super editor or something and assign that to clients and wrap all your stuff in there so that way any admin could log in and see everything, but then clients could go in with that stuff in a new role. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think that would work? Yeah, you I could. think you could do it that way. Um, you could you could make new roles. You could use your IP addresses. Well, use the IP gets back to I want to, one one solution I can roll out for most everyone without having to get into specific user IDs or IPs or anything. Just say I go and say now instead of them being an admin or editor, there's this new super role that hides most everything. So we can whoever is an admin still can go in and do it just across most of the board. Interesting. Is there, is there something? Is there a hole there I'm missing that may? I don't think so. I think that sounds like the best way to do what you're saying. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Speaking of that scenario, All right. I'm actually going to bring up. So now that you've poo pooed plugins, I wanted to mention my favorite plugin. Only poo pooing uh, for like out a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, for a while, I've been using one called Admin Menu Editor Pro. That's the one. Yeah. Um, is I think the most popular. Mm -hmm. um, and to speak specifically to that scenario, the um, and also talking about creating user roles and managing user roles earlier. Um, what I found is like the quick dash solution is I just, <coughs> since I'm sitting here, I posted it on a GitHub, Git gist, Git gist, I don't know how you pronounce it, whatever. Yeah. Um, but a GitHub gist that basically all you have to do, all you have to do, four lines is copy the admin role. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to look at all the capabilities and stuff. But if you, but I usually, what I do is I create a site admin role that is the identical to an admin role um, so customers still feel like, clients still feel like they have admin privileges because it has the word admin in it. Um, yep. but, then, but then using Admin Menu Editor Pro, I'll go in and hide a bunch of stuff from them. Mm -hmm. um, and the newer version of that plugin not only hides the menu items, but actually takes away their capability. So it speaks to the other gentleman's question about like if they go and look for plugins.php and type in the URL, they'll actually see you do not have these capabilities. Um, and so it gets around the power user uh, scenario. So that's kind of the, the combination that I usually use. Interesting. Um, and I found that that plugin tends to, I, I've talked to the developer um, nice enough. Mm -hmm. um, they <coughs> seem to continue to, to be developing it. So, so, so far awesome. it hasn't done anything. Yeah, that can be a really good option. Like I said, you just have to stay on top of it because that's, yeah, you get a very desperate email or call one day if it breaks things. Um, but yeah, if you're staying on top of it, that's awesome. A lot of these plugins, and this is how I ended up doing it, I found some of them. You go in and you look at the code. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? Mm -hmm. Now, what could I do with my own? I mean, there's a, that's the whole, that's part of what I fell in love with. It's GPL, you see it. I mean, what is this, what is this filter thing? How do I, how do I find this filter thing? All these things that you talked about. So, um, I learned on, on uh, Justin Tadlock's members plugin. Mm -hmm. that, that became my, my tutorial. Right on. Yeah. And that's, it's very helpful for a lot of people. I'm trying to kind of ride the line between those because so we come from a software development standpoint and so that's our default to go in and do that. 99% of people don't care about that at all. Um, don't even know how to start with that. Don't think about it that way. Um, and so by kind of presenting some of these options like I don't know people like us, like the super nerds, um, we're comfortable with having super nerdy options because we know what happens when we break things and how to fix broken things. Uh, but for the most part, like I really want to help people understand what can break things, how to get rid of those things, and at least how to start approaching dealing with them. I find that a lot of people haven't had the kind of groundwork to know, well, you know, step one might be just hiding a page because that's the easiest way to stop discoverability. From there, if you have smart people Googling how to find the page anyway, like how do you deal with that scenario? And you kind of step it up from there. Um, so again, just kind of starting with only show me what I need to have to get my job done and then move on uh, is really helpful. So, 
Yes, ma'am. Last question. <laughs> Make it good. You have said some very disparaging things about the editor. I am probably intermediate to her level. Um, I mostly do development outside of the WordPress and then upload it, but I do use that editor panel quite a bit, mostly for CSS changes when I'm on the fly at a client site or something like that. And then I go home and download those files to my computer. Am I getting myself in danger? Yes. Yeah, okay, why? <laughs> <laughs> why is the good question? Because our intentions are really good, but it totally relies on our memory and willpower to do something. Uh, and every time we edit something in one place and say, okay, basically I need to go home and make sure everything is caught up that way, like you're sort of setting a dependency in your mind that's really hard to keep up with and is really risky if you don't. Um, like I've been in situations where I've done that forgotten to re-download it, and then fix something else, pushed up code, undid all the stuff I did originally, don't know why or didn't notice it. Somebody emailed me, asked why I undid all the stuff I already did. I don't know why. I have to go back, you know, and it just creates sort of an iffy situation. Um, I like to challenge, by the way, all of us are intermediate developers, okay? Um, but yeah, I like to challenge, like if you're writing code and that is a necessary part of what you're doing, even with CSS, if you're doing anything that edits actual PHP files, like just go through the very uncomfortable process of learning, okay, I've got my code editor, this is my process, and this is always the way I'm going to do it. The problem is on client sites where I don't have access to my own servers, where everything has to get backed up in the end anyway. I'm, at a, you know, I'm using a, my laptop, which I cannot store every website I make on Ooh. my laptop. I, or worse, I'm on their machine, yeah. and they want me to do something. And I can, I can do it. I can make it happen from their machine. They can see it immediately. They're happy. If the biggest concern is my forgetting to download it and back it up, I'm OK with that. If there are problems with the actual functionality of it blowing up something unrelated, then I'm scared. Yeah. If you can limit it to CSS stuff, I would go ahead and roll in, like Jetpack has a CSS module and different pieces like that. Like I would go ahead and roll one of those things that just lets you put in style um, <clears throat> and then injects it into the page and lets you kind of override what's already there instead of editing the style sheets. That will limit your risk because if it's CSS only, there's no way to break anything. It's editing those PHP files that makes all the difference. Um, and so that's, that's the route I would go because I know what you're saying. You're saying like changing the CSS there is the problem. It's the fact that I could click on another file and change that. Right? Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, basically. And if you're very careful in the file editor, yes, you can change the CSS things and it will never break anything, but it's just, you're just walking on lava, you know? Okay. Well, I love the idea of hiding other people from it, certainly. Yeah, right on. There's also a potential security risk when you have the editor enabled. If somebody nefarious gets admin access, they can go into that editor, deactivate, deactivate a plug and go in there, put a little tiny script in that code, call that code directly, download a whole payload, and your access infected with that. Right on. Yeah, that's another good point. So just disable it just for the sake of dealing with potential. Yeah, because rubber bands on watermelons, right? Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. And if you have more questions, come let me know. All right.